Well, hello, friends, and welcome to another one of my Tech Talks. The Dragonfly BSD project recently released their latest 6.2.1 version. Let's take a look at what's described as a tiny yet charismatic BSD distribution today. Dragonfly BSD was forked from FreeBSD 4.8 way back in June 2003. As it happened, that was right after my team transitioned from FreeBSD to Linux, since FreeBSD 5 was falling further behind in hardware compatibility and Linux was really starting to take off. The focus here is on performance and highly interactive programs to run across multiple clustered machines. In this video, I'd like to take a look at setting up a single standalone desktop with some productivity tools. Let's get started by booting a QEMU virtual machine with the latest release ISO. Dragonfly is booting up, lowering the kernel, and all the associated modules. We've got uh, eight CPUs, virtual CPUs allocated, and eight gigs of RAM. So let's log in as installer, as it suggests, to launch the welcoming installer. Install Dragonfly BSD, I'll select twice. We'll do legacy BIOS today. And 128 gig disk is our target for installation. So we've formatted it. We'll use Hammer 2 which is a Dragonfly-specific file system. We'll go over the defaults for the subpartitions. Uh, as you can see here, and slash build, uh, we'll just use the rest of the disk. We'll accept and create. Yeah, small hammer file systems can fill up very quickly. Well, uh, for today, uh, 128 gigs is more than enough. So let's go ahead and install the packages using copy duplicate or CP dupe from the install ISO to the target disk and it's done. Let's configure the system. I'll select the time zone. Uh, we're using UTC here of course on the host and I am in the US Pacific time zone, uh, Los Angeles specifically. And I'll just check the date and time. Looks good. Yeah, let's set the uh, root password once and twice. It's been changed. Let's add a user. Username Steven. That's also my real name. I'll give myself a password. Enter it twice to be sure. And I'll also add myself to Wheel in other group memberships. And uh, there we go. Let's uh, DHCP configure EM0. Looks like that succeeded. I got an IP version 6 address. For host name today, I'll use dfly. And uh, console font, screen map. Don't need to remove any software packages. That all looks good. So we're good. It's installed, supposedly. So let's reboot. With the fingers crossed. Let it come up. And, uh, yeah, booting from hard disk. So we'll boot the Dragonfly BSD partition on our QEMU machine. Let it all come up. Took me a while to find the right combination of virtual hide hardware for a Dragonfly BSD to work. Um, log in as Steven. And let's clear the screen. Let's become root with SU. And let's make sure our system is upgraded to the latest patch set it's with package upgrade. And looks like we've got uh, 21 packages to deal with. So let's go ahead by typing Y. And, uh, so all the patches are being downloaded in the refresh packages, including Python 38, 3.8.12. 
some dependency uh, message here we can ignore. We'll just synchronize the file system and reboot. And uh, let it come up one more time. And uh, yeah, as I was saying, um, I, my modern hardware has trouble with BSDs in general, so pretty much stuck with using virtualization here. Let's log in as uh, Steven again. And uh, we won't deal with the D ports today. Let's become root one more time because I want to install do as instead of sudo. A lot of people, a lot of you suggested I use do as instead of sudo. So I'll try that today. So it's telling uh, me to create and edit uh, user local etsy do as .conf. And what I want to do here for demonstration purposes today is permit the wheel group that I added myself to, if you recall. And I also like to permit uh, no password needed for the Steven account. So I don't bore you guys with having to type the root password over and over again. So now do as should work. Let's test it by becoming me again, by exiting the root shell and typing do as dash u root as user root package upgrade. And looks like uh, do as works and all our packages are up to date. Let's take a look at the file system table here. And as you can see, if you look closely, we've got slash and slash build or root and slash build file systems are of type hammer2. Uh, and those are the uh, Dragonfly specific file system type for easy snapshotting, uh, deduplication, etc. So let's list the uh, volumes with uh, hammer2 volume dash list as root. And as you can see, we have two of them, uh, at root and at data. Let's look at the pseudo file system list. We've got a couple of masters. We haven't done any snapshots yet. Um, so we have on slash and slash build um, our pseudo file systems uh, for hammer2. So um, before we do anything else, let's create a snapshot with hammer2 snapshot the root file system, and we'll call it as underscore installed. And that's how quick it is. Pseudo file systems are kind of like sub volumes on ButterFS. Um, you've got the as installed snapshot, which is writable, and you can use it as a regular file system, mount it, uh, recover from it, etc. So we're done. We have now a snapshot at root file system. Moving right along, let's uh, install our uh, X11 system, and also I've chosen XFCE today for uh, our desktop environment. So we've got a 318 packages uh, to fetch or download. And then once that's done, um, which should be any moment now, skipping over a lot of this, uh, thanks to the magic of video editing as before, don't want to bore you guys too much with uh, watching uh, the screens downloading. So now uh, everything's downloaded, and so it's extracting and then installing each of the 318 packages, including dependencies that the X11 uh, Windows system needs, as well as XFCE and all the uh, things. So um, it's giving us a reminder if you need to run X screen saver or you want to do power management like power down reboot from XFCE, you've got to do these instructions. We won't do that uh, today, but instead let's prepare XFCE for running by making sure we've got a couple of daemons uh, enabled in rc.conf. The first one is the inter-application or inter-process uh, communication with dbus underscore enables, yes. We also want the hardware abstraction layer uh, daemon running, HALD underscore enable equals yes. So we need those two running as a bare minimum, as a bare prerequisites for uh, running XFCE on BSD distros successfully. So with do as dash u root, let's reboot the system. 
and make sure these uh, demons uh, uh, load up properly on next boot. So we've seen this all before. Let's make sure that we are fully rebooted with the uh, new rc.conf file. And uh, there we go. Let's log in as Steven. And uh, let's cross fingers, start XFCE4. And hopefully it'll all configure properly. And we should see XFCE4. And there it is. That looks successful. Uh, looks like the uh, screen resolution is a little bit off today. So let's fix that by going with 720p. Hitting apply. Keep this configuration. All right. So we've got the uh, little launcher down below. Let's launch the terminal emulator. And uh, let's do the following. Um, let's do as, as user root, package, install. I want NeoFetch, Firefox, and LibreOffice. That's a good starting group of packages. So another 85 packages to install with all the uh, dependencies. So we've got NeoFetch 7.1, Firefox 95, and LibreOffice 7.2.1. So that looks good. Let's just let it do its thing here. Shouldn't take too long. Okay, it's fetched everything. Now it's extracting and then installing each package. Make this uh, Dragonfly BSD install uh, useful for productivity, at least basic stuff. So we've got some more helpful things such as SSH. Um, so we've got NeoFetch XFCE 4.1.6, which is the latest XFCE version. As you can see, we're having a memory of 2.7 GB consumed. Yeah. Um, Again, Dragonfly BSD is all about performance, not about saving on memory. So kind of like Windows in that regard. It uses a lot of uh, RAM, even at idle. So these are all the uh, usual suspects here. We just launch LibreOffice, make sure it runs. Yeah, pretty much looks to me like a standard XFCE install with the... Uh, with the uh, usual accessories and things we're used to seeing. All right. Yeah, about XFCE. We're running Dragonfly BSD 6.2-synth 4.16, 64 bits. Let me launch the uh, Firefox web browser. And let's go to the home page of Dragonfly uh, BSD with HTTPS colon slash slash www.dragonflybsd.org. And there we go. This is what the uh, rather spare um, home page looks like. Let's look at the, quickly at the history. Here you can learn all about what the ultimate goals are, native clustering support in the kernel, for example, sophisticated cache management framework for file system namespaces, etc. As I mentioned earlier, forked from FreeBSD 4.8 in 2003. Matthew Dillon has been, it's been like a one-man um, force of technology here with Dragonfly BSD. So a lot of other developers are involved. Here's that dragonfly photograph that inspired the name. Yeah, very interesting. So I'll leave that uh, to the viewer to read all about that if they're interested. Here's some features, the kernel features. Again, it's all about clustering, multi-machine, symmetric multiprocessing, etc., etc. The Hammer Dragonfly file system, Hammer 2 in our case, saw a little bit of that. Again, you could uh, write other videos to explore it further if you guys like. Um, 
yeah a lot of uh, features added to the uh, FreeBSD 4.8 fork kernel it's been moved far beyond FreeBSD now it's been what uh, soon nine years eight and a half years of Dragonfly BSD so Fred is the mascot of the Dragonfly BSD so we've got the uh, handbook again this is this documentation I had to really dig around um, to find even a little bit of you know the basics and how to operate own and operate Dragonfly BSD so they talk about hardware configuration etc etc we've got some mailing lists for you very traditional that you can subscribe and browse if you have any questions or want to want to post any questions or input to the team we've also got a donations page here so if you're interested and want to support fascinating projects like dragonfly bsd uh, you've got monetary options for monetary uh, donations hardware donations so you can sponsor this project. So they've got a nice Hall of Fame page here. So yeah, um, definitely encourage you to consider uh, contributing to uh, to the project if you really like this and, and you get some learning out of it. So that, folks, is a quick whirlwind tour of Dragonfly BSD. I've barely scratched the surface with Dragonfly BSD's numerous features. But I hope this video at least got you interested to explore and learn further. Thanks so much for watching, and to all the subscribers helping reach the first big 1k goal for this channel. Please continue to like and subscribe for more of these videos, and I'm looking forward to reading your comments. Until next time, have fun and take care.